Support for this program is provided in part by Widow's Fresh Marketplace. Welcome to my cooking show, The Natural Cook with Anna Gershenson. As much as I hate that summer is leaving us, I'm ready to welcome the fall with its gorgeous foliage, with cooling temperatures, and with the foods that I adore, winter squashes. I did not grow up eating winter squashes. However, I embraced them completely coming to this country. They are so comforting, nutritious, and satisfy your sweet craving, as well as giving warmth to your body. So today, we are going to be cooking with two different squashes. The butternut squash, as well as sweet dump, not sweet dumpling, but delicata squash. They are kind of similar, and they are also both my favorites. So let's start with cooking um, the first dish will be uh, red lentil soup that will be flavored with lots of garlic as well as coriander and cumin and some Aleppo pepper. And the second dish will be roasted delicata squash with red onions and then it will be served spooned over fried sage, and we'll talk about all these ingredients as we are cooking them. So let's start with the soup. To start the soup, I will take the red lentils that I already pre-washed. Red lentils um, are full of nutrients, and I already devoted a whole show on lentils, and you, if you want to refresh uh, your memory, you can watch my show where I cook with lentils, but in the meantime, um, don't forget that red lentils especially have to be cooked thoroughly because their water gets cloudy and we have to wash it off until we see clear water so that our soup is not going to be cloudy. So we will turn on our stove. Okay, and First, we will put water. We are going to be using about two cups of lentils to two quarts of water. So the soup is going to be pretty thick because lentils, red lentils fall apart as they are cooking, unlike other lentils that tend to keep their shape better. And this is exactly what we are looking for. You can, you can um, cook this soup and eat it um, you know, with a, with a rough texture, or you can um, actually puree it, and that's what we are going to do. And also to flavor and to enrich the soup, we are going to add butternut squash. So now that my soup is, um, is ready, it's sitting on the stove, and it is going to start cooking soon. Once it starts boiling, I will reduce the temperature and partially cover it so that it cooks. As you see, I haven't flavored it with anything yet. So now for, to butternut squash. We are going to cut this side and throw out the top. And then we will place it on the side, which gives us good base for support, and cut it in half. A lot of people are deterred by cooking with butternut squash because it's difficult to peel it and when you are buying it already pre-cut and peeled you are definitely paying more. However, here you don't have to deal with it. All you do is cut it in half and see how I am cutting the squash. I'm holding it firmly and kind of uh, wedging the knife and 
manipulating it back and forth, not like I'm sewing, but kind of like an, a swinging motion, and that helps to propel the knife through the thickness of this hard squash. Then I will take a spoon and I will put it right into the cavity. And f with a firm application, I will start going around the sides of the cavity, going into the depth and cleaning around the sides, releasing the seeds and putting them into a little bowl that I have here that is also very helpful to have next to you so that you can discard everything that you do not need in your cooking. So I cleaned one and now I will do the same with the other one. My oven is preheated, so you have to remember, remember we talked about how important it is to have all the ingredients ready and to be mentally prepared what you are going to do in what order. So squash is going to take about 25 minutes to roast and the lentils take about 20 minutes to soften and after that we'll add flavoring to them the, at which point they will cook longer. And so um, we are kind of timing it um, accordingly. So now that our butternut squash is prepared and as you can see, it's very vibrant orange color which indicates that there are carotenoids, precursors of vitamin A which are very good for immune supporting and inflammatory actions. So the first thing that I will do is I'll salt it. So I'll take the salt and just sprinkle over and with one hand, I'm doing the sprinkling, and with the other, I'm rubbing it over the, over the surface. And I'm doing it first because salt helps release the water. So then I'll be sprinkling some olive oil, and with the liquid being kind of released, the olive oil will go very smoothly on top of the squash. Okay, so now, I will sprinkle some olive oil into the cavity, into both cavities, and, um, and smear it all over the inside and the outside of the squash. Um, my oven is preheated to 400 degrees. You can actually roast the squash also at a lower temperature. It will take a little longer. However, because we are going to be uh, utilizing the oven uh, for roasting delicata squash um, I, and, and roasting delicata squash requires higher temperature, I preheat it to 400. So let's grab our cooking sheet. We just place it on the cooking sheet and stick it in the oven. See, it is very, very simple action, doesn't take much time. Okay. Now we can set our timer to 25 minutes and um, so that we are in touch with what is happening with our squash. So now that our squash is sitting in the oven and you can actually take advantage of um, this, you know, oven time and do more than one squashes, and then you will utilize the flesh of the second squash by um, scooping it out and putting it into freezer bags and freezing it, and then you, you don't have to do it again when you want to make this soup or you want to make another dish where you are using butternut squash cooked this way. So now on to delicata squash. Delicata squash has a fairly short season, and um, it, is, it is in the family of squashes that has edible, edible um, skin. So you really don't have to peel it. Um, some squashes have a little tougher skin, like some delicata. So we'll see when we, when we are ready to eat it, whether it is um, tender or not. But in the meantime, again, I'm cutting off the end and then I'm cutting it in half because all I need to do here, I, I'll cut both ends actually, and all I need to do here is just cut it in half and scoop out the seeds and then cut 
cut it into um, smaller pieces that are, that are convenient for eating. Uh, because we are going to cook it together with onions, um, I think that the pieces should be, onions actually take a bit longer to cook to soften than this delicata squash, so I think that you need to think about that as well. Like what will be the size of the onions, um, the wedges that you will be cutting compared to the size of delicata squash. So delicata squash has a high, fairly high moisture content and so it gets tender very, very quickly. Okay, so we are done cleaning it and then we'll cut it in half um, horizontally, the long way, and cutting into smaller pieces. All right, so I'll cut it in half. Now it's better to put it this way because it is more stable. Okay, all right. Okay, now let's turn it around because it will be easier for you to cut it into smaller pieces because the flesh is softer than the skin and so you can just cut it in about half inch pieces and in the meantime let's talk a little bit about squashes. Squashes are the kinds of foods as I mentioned that are very comforting and warming and in the summer we want to eat more leafy leafy vegetables because they have very light energy and we don't want we don't want to disperse the heat that's in the air and we want our food to help us do that. However, when, when warm cold temperatures come, we are ready to think about how to preserve heat, how to make our bodies more comfortable. And it's it's the vegetables like squashes, long cooking dishes like the soup we are cooking, stews that will make us feel really cozy and comfy. And so think about it when you are cold and eat something that will help you preserve your heat. So now we are going to put our pre-cut delicata squash onto another baking sheet and then move over to the onions. Now the squash, the squashes are uh, the kinds of vegetables that you really want to buy organic. Butternut squash in particular is the kind of crop that is very helpful in removing contaminants from soil. So it absorbs things from the soil that are not good there very easily and and because it facilitates it and is used uh, has been discovered to be like um, an interloper in that kind of action you really probably want to look for an organic squash so that you are assured that whatever contaminants were in the soil that the squash hasn't really absorbed it easily so as you can see I peeled my onion and now um, the root part, I will just remove those um, fuzzy things, but I will keep the root because it will help me keep the layers together. So let's check our soup. Our soup is doing well. It's, um, it's coming to boil. Maybe we should increase the heat a little bit to make it come to boil faster. Okay, so back to our onion. Um, I will cut, cut off more on this end so that it is stable and that you will be comfortable that um, it's not wobbly when you are cutting it. So cut it halfway through the root and now place the onion. You see that's where the root is and that's where it holds all the layers together and if we were to cut it then definitely we would lose that and all the layers of onion would fall apart. So now you hold it tightly and you start cutting um, into wedges. So we give it about 
and a half an inch cut because we know that onions cook um, longer, as I mentioned before. So we use red onion here. Red onions in general are more on the milder side. Okay, reducing the heat on our soup. As I said before, we do not season it and we let it cook slowly and peacefully for about 20 minutes. Okay, so um, in general, the, the sharper the flavor of the onion, the more antioxidants there are. So with red onion being eaten mostly raw and being really sweet, um, we, we use it here kind of more for color and, and for sweetness when it's going to be done. All right, so let's take our squash and our onions. We'll season them with salt, pepper, and olive oil. And that's it. And then we put it into the oven and it will take about also 25 minutes for it to roast. So toss it together. Taste to make sure that it is well seasoned because onions and squash are going to be absorbing the salt as they are cooking. So we need a little more salt. And unless you seasoned it properly, it's just not going to taste the way you would like to. The flavors are not going to come through. Okay. Um, we will proceed with um, the flavoring agents for our soup, so stay tuned. Now that our lentils have been cooking, and as you can see, um, the color has turned. They are not pink anymore. They're kind of yellowish, so they lose their color. However, the flavor is there. We are on to flavoring the soup. We are flavoring it mostly with garlic. So we are putting a couple of tablespoons of oil onto a heated skillet, and then we will grate garlic into our um, mortar and pestle. This is a very valuable tool as well that I like using a lot. So the garlic goes in, and then we take a tablespoon of salt because we haven't salted it yet. You have to be sure that your salt is diamond crystal kosher salt because the other salts might be saltier, so be careful when you are adding salt. You can always add more, but you cannot take it out. So um, now we also need coriander. Coriander is very nice for flavoring it, and we are going to just mash them up together and add to our oil. And then we will saute for a little bit and add it back to the soup. And it will cook for another maybe um, few minutes, up to 10 minutes. And then we will add butternut squash soup that is already um, baked and soft. And I'll show it to you what it looks like after it's been uh, cooked. Let's take our mixture and add it to the skillet. Okay, now we will really smell garlic and it smells magnificent. Anytime I cook anything with garlic, I, I'm in heaven because I know that it is going to be delicious. It's also very nutritious. So you want to kind of smash it on a skillet in your oil all around so that garlic kind of softens because raw garlic has a very sharp flavor but when it cooks it softens up and becomes milder and sweeter. Okay, I'll turn off this heat. We don't need it anymore. And now we will take, to help us remove all this stuff, 
We'll take some liquid from our soup, add it to the skillet, mix it together, and then place it back into the pot. Just scrape all these wonderful bits. You will put it back into the uh, soup. And then we will also add some cumin. I also love adding cumin because it contributes to the depth of flavor. And some Aleppo pepper. This actually soup is from Aleppo. It's from a book that I enjoy reading about the Jewish cuisine of Aleppo. And this very, very simple cook, um, cookbook offered this wonderful recipe that I am changing a little bit, as I always do. However, um, the change is that I add butternut squash. And you don't have to do it if you don't have it. It will be delicious without it as well. So now let's mix it and we'll taste it right away to make sure that we like all the flavors before we proceed with the rest. It needs more salt. Remember that without salt, all other flavors don't come through. So don't be afraid. Don't add too much, but add sufficiently. Okay, now the flavor is nice. Our butternut squash came out of the oven. You can see that it has kind of um, blistered a little bit and browned. So now I'll take it and it's so easy to just scoop it. Scoop it into the soup and the skin can be discarded. So squash will add this nice sweetness and substance to our soup. Okay, it will be much easier if I do it on the, on the pan because the skin got really, really soft. Okay, all right. We'll take more from here. It's a bigger chunk. So let's add. They'll cook together for a little bit. And then because the squash is so sweet, I always like using lemon to kind of the acid of the lemon to counteract the sweetness and add to this bouquet of flavors. OK. So let's put this in the back. Clean up my hands. And now we will see how it tastes together. Let's take the microplane. Zest contributes its own flavor. It's very different from the flavor of the lemon juice, which is more acidic and this is more aromatic. I already rolled my lemon. Now I will cut it in half and use this to keep the seeds in to add lemon juice. Okay, we can always add more. Let's taste. Okay. All right. Okay, more salt. More Aleppo. I like it on the spicier side. And some more cumin that will give us the depth of flavor. Now we can turn it off. And I use immersion blender that is so convenient. You can definitely use um, a different blender, but immersion blender serves a purpose. Right, our soup is pureed. Now we proceed to the next dish, which is butternut squash. Let's clean up our skillet. And what we will do here is uh, use flavoring for butternut squash. So we will use some butter. If people do not eat butter, you can use oil. However, I love butter and it will be really, really nice over, spooned over butternut squash. Now, 
the sage that I planted at the beginning of the summer has grown nicely and now I can finally use it because butternut squash and sage as well as rosemary are like match made in heaven. It's a wonderful combination. Both of them come from the same family. They have rosmarinic acid that is an antioxidant and sage is one of the herbs that has the longest history of being used as a culinary and medicinal herb. It was used in ancient Egypt for fertility. It was also used as a, um, to prevent, like to treat swelling, to clean wounds, a lot of different uses. The uses keep going on and on. So the butternut squash um, will taste now again to make sure that we like this flavor. However, to flavor our delicata squash that is ready, we will just um, melt the butter, add sage, and we'll make fried sage. And the sage will flavor the butter and will soften um, as it cooks, and it will be absolutely delicious. I can smell it. As it cooks, it will um, deepen color. What we'll do is we will take now our wonderful squash and plate it. So let's take the spatula, put the squash on a plate. And squash gives us a lot of fiber. It gives us vitamin A. It gives us other nutrients like B vitamins and minerals like magnesium. So this is a very, very healthy and comforting food. And it's also very sweet. And that really helps because when you eat something sweet and natural that doesn't prevent you from spiking your sugar, that will be very, very helpful for you to maintain good balance of your energy. So actually squash is 90% um, starch, but it's not the same starch as, as in, other, um, in other like grains. It has components that are uh, anti-insulin producing and that are really delicious and helpful in stabilizing your blood sugar. So now that the soup is ready, we'll sprinkle it with a little bit of um, Aleppo and a little more cumin. You can also do um, cilantro, it goes very nicely. And we will spoon our sage over um, butternut squash so that it adds to the flavor. So we created two beautiful dishes for our winter eating, preparing for the winter. Fall has started. Please treat yourself well, watch my show, and cook with me. Thank you. Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace.